About three months in, I remember sitting in a Best Buy parking lot and she called me and I declined it. Didn't really have a reason to decline it. I just didn't want to talk to her. And then I kept sitting there for a little longer and then I just started crying. And I'm like, where the f am I? What the f am I doing here? Is this really what I want to be doing with my life right now? She called again and I picked it up. And I had to tell her over the phone that I didn't know if I wanted to do this anymore. Welcome into the podcast, another episode of Live In Large, the final episode from my apartment in Los Angeles. How do you feel? I feel like it went by really quickly. Right? Well, we I just like, started. I know, but like, I feel like we've been really consistent. Yeah. And it just feels like it's just, it's ended so abruptly. I know, right? Yeah. I feel like we had a little rhythm going on. It's a little bittersweet. Yeah. We've actually, I think most podcasts fail after seven episodes, so we've already beat that. Wait, is that really a stat? Yeah, because what, people give up. What number is this? I don't know how many we've done, but we definitely know more than seven. Sweet. So we're succeeding right now. We're past the point of it. Well, I guess we can still fail. We can still fail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, our numbers aren't great on YouTube, but our clips are doing well. We'll take it. But we're going to get these YouTube numbers up. We need you to drop a like and hit the subscribe button and comment for the freaking algorithm, gods. Um, Even if you don't like me, you can comment. Yeah. You I'll, can. I'll read them. I read actually. I actually read all of them, and they hurt very badly. But I can deal with it. Iggy's getting recognized now for being on the podcast. It's kind of a dope. cool experience. I have a lot of people coming up to me saying they love my podcast. That's awesome. Our I have a lot podcast. of people. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of coming. I have a lot of people coming up to me and saying they love your podcast as well. Really? <laughs> no, I just I, should I put your name up there with the with the Mark Donor? Let's get a couple more. Let's get a couple deeper. Couple. Yeah, deeper? I want to earn. I want to earn my little. Uh, and friends or whatever you're going to call it. Yeah. My 10 year journey is come to an end guys. This is the final episode. I'm moving in two days. I'm going to stay with Iggy for a little bit, uh, until he kicks me out and I'm back to Ohio. How you feeling? Excited. As you like pack up, as you start to like shrink your life in LA, yeah. is it, it's like, I'm sure it's feeling more real now. Yeah. But I'm feeling excited. I thought I would have a moment of like, sadness yeah but i haven't felt that i i'm like really looking forward to what i'm going to accomplish in ohio and the change of pace and i was just telling iggy i'm really going to focus on my health and getting my six-pack abs that's right because <laughs> yeah. i'm 30 now and it's crazy you start to feel it like it you get a little yeah, more sore what are you talking about get a little more sore at the gym i blew my back out on the toilet uh, yeah. six months ago it's well, not a good time but i talked about this with my brother don't you agree that men reach their prime in their early to mid thirties. I mean, it depends what you define as prime. Like physical peak prime is probably late twenties. Okay. If you mean like I've made a little money now and I'm yeah. a little more mature and like I can still go out, but I can also like have more meaningful conversation. You know what I mean? Like there's like the physical maturity and the, the emotional maturity. I think those two things kind of come together to your point, early thirties. Where you're not just like a fuck boy, yeah, 22 yeah. year old kid with no money in your bank mm -hmm. account. You now have some money and have like more meaningful relationships, but still feel really good. When do you think your prime was? Or are you in it? I was about to say that's <laughs> the horrible assumption. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I think I am. I think I'm in my emotional prime right now. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm like, I'm still hopeful. I feel like I've gone through enough to have like perspective on things that are going on around me. I'm more grateful now than ever. Mm-hmm. Physically, I'm a mess, dude. Yeah. I'm, well, I played football in college. I played rugby for Team USA for like a little bit. Tore my ACL. It was the end of my quote unquote yeah. career. Um, physical prime, dude, 25, 26, I was a fucking tank, dude. Yeah. I was an absolute monster. Felt great, was fast, big. I had abs at 25. It was ridiculous. I do not have abs now. Mm -hmm. um, I need to see a picture of you with abs. It's absurd. Yeah. I'm a monster. I'll send it to you and we'll put it in the thing. <clears throat> yeah. But like, I find myself, the only, <laughs> we were talking about this a little, bit, a little bit ago. The only time I like miss that version, like really miss that version of me is when, this is going to sound so fratty, <laughs> when I'm playing beer die. Yeah. I want to sprint and run and jump and be as athletic as I've ever been. But like my body doesn't let me do it. It's so frustrating. And that game is as competitive as anything. It's competitive as college football. It's ridiculous. Yeah, we went to a party this weekend on the beach, and they played beard eye, oh, and it got best. aggressive. I'll throw a video over screen. They were wrestling oh, yeah. each other in the sand. It was a fun party. I mean, I'm leaning towards 
So I had way more fun during the day mm-hmm. than I had in the evening. Well, yeah, because the older you get, the, the hangovers get worse. You were down for two, three days. You said yesterday you were feeling like trash. I woke up on Tuesday like, okay, I'm finally better. It took me, two, it takes me two full days. That's crazy. I mean, I haven't reached that part yet. It's, sometimes, it's coming for you, big guy. But I'm not drinking as much as I used to drink. So, I mean, I yeah. had a, I actually, I stopped drinking at the Dr. Dorfman party. I, I, I think I maybe only had like one yeah. tops at that party. And my energy level just started to like, I was just there because like all of our friends were there. Yeah. But when I was done, I was like. So tired. I, like <laughs> my body was like, dude, go to bed, bro. Let me take you guys through our day. So Saturday, we went to the beach party, had some fun, played deer die, met some cool people. And then we went to this doctor's party. He had a black swan party. There's like people in swan, black swan. Interesting outfits, theme. Ballet, like yeah. dancing around in the hills. Super big hill to get up it. This windy ass hill. There was a line out front. Thankfully, the guy we were with knows the guy that hosted it or the girl that hosted it. We got straight in. Yeah. Get there. They got a DJ playing this beautiful house in the hills. We're there till three. Two and change. Two and Two, change. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got an Uber out and we sat in this because there was a cop trying to come up to shut down the party. So the traffic, these Uber drivers are fucking idiots. No, dude, it was an ambulance, bro. That was a cop. Oh, was there an ambulance? I missed that one. So we tried to leave a little earlier. Yeah, we that. sat there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sat there for 30 minutes. Forever. Yeah. As we're walking down the hill, it's like typical like LA mess. And the hill, without exaggeration, is a half a mile yeah. directly uphill. How the girls didn't eat shit and die is remarkable. There's a dude in a planter completely late. Did you see this guy? Oh, yeah. Dude. There's a dude in a planter, completely laid out, completely horizontal, in the planter, in the bushes, gone. This guy was sleeping outside the party in like a flower pot. But like big enough to hold his body. Yeah, and we tried to hold him up. We're like, hey, are you good, man? He's like, yeah, I'm good. And then we walked away and he fell right back down. There was one girl that was like, we can't leave him. We have to help. Yeah. And she goes and she like sits him up and she's like, are you okay? Do you need anything? He's like, no, I'm fine. The moment she turns her back, Ugh, like immediately <laughs> back in the fucking flower pot like an that asshole. That was hilarious. But getting back on the prime talk. Yeah, back in the prime talk. Um, I think I'm entering my prime. I can see that for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The emotional maturity. I've had two failed relationships and like my mindset going into dating, not that I'm not ready yet, but like I am not going to put up with any fucking bullshit. Like my emotional maturity, I think is at its peak right now. I'm going to get my physical at its peak when I get back to Ohio. Cause there's going to be nothing else to do. I was telling Iggy, I'll show that I'll show my goal body right here. This is what I want to look like. And I'm going to achieve that. I'm going to run outside every day. There's this place called Hudson Springs park. I'm going to run at, I'm going to work out with my brother every single day. I'm going to eat 220 grams of protein a day. Minimum minimum i'm just gonna be working out and thankfully i'm in a good headspace now where usually when i go back home me and my sister like to drink wine but i'm cutting all that shit out and get sober i'm gonna try to go full sober maybe i'll drink at like special occasions yeah but yeah no no drinking for me have you decided if you're going to drive across the country i am that's a real thing yeah is that are you nervous about that at all i'll It'll probably be a bitch when I start doing it. It's going to be a bitch. But I want someone to come with me, bro. The invite's still open. I, less and less likely, because I got some more work I got to do, probably. Yeah, Iggy just signed a big contract with uh, someone. I don't, I don't know if you want to yeah, talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about it soon. It's, it's tight, um, But yeah, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm going to... I'm in a good headspace right now. All right, I'm excited. And, and I, I can see you entering your prime with everything you've gone through and then being able to be home mm-hmm. and like focus. It's hard to focus on the physical stuff here. Yeah. So many distractions. Like we're grateful, but we have friends that want to go out all the time. Yeah. It's easy to like over drink and then not mm-hmm. work out the next day and then like have a day where you're kind of like sluggish. Uber like eats. it's Yeah. It's so yeah. hard. Yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I know that you can do it. It's probably, this is the setting to do it. The thing that I realized when I, and I talked about this on a previous podcast, when I went to Arizona, I realized how much time is wasted here just because of traffic. Yeah. Like it is very hard to fit everything into your schedule here when it takes you, took you 30 minutes to drive here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, that's me going to the gym, 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back, shower, like you're, you're wasting four hours just to go to the gym because I'm there for a couple hours. Imagine having like a real job 
where you yeah. like drove an hour to go to your desk true. job. I shouldn't be complaining. My I mean, we're not complaining. I mean, it's true. We have a lot of things we want to do. Yeah. But the idea of driving an hour to like downtown, wasting an hour, wasting 20 minutes parking, going to your desk job, being there for eight hours true, true. and an hour and a half coming. Dude, I would fucking, it's bad. It's terrible. Yeah. But as I reflect, since you asked if I'm excited, if I'm sad, as I reflect on my time here, I'm super grateful for it. I've made a lot of friends. I've lost a lot of friends. I've fallen in love twice. I've learned a lot from both those relationships. Um, it is going to be weird for sure. But I think, you know, my first chapter of life was in Ohio. Then there was a mini chapter at college. And then this chapter has been the longest chapter, I feel like, 10 years. Chapter's ending. On to the new one. New beginning. That's fun. New book yeah. being written. Yeah, that's cool. And hopefully. As you, as you look back on, how long did you spend here? I, may, I moved here in 2015, so almost so Almost a years. decade. Yeah. As you look back on almost a decade in L.A., do you think you got out of it what you came to get? Yes. Which was? And I think that I achieved that three, four years ago. Okay. And the, the reason that I feel like now is my time to leave is my last few years have been super stagnant. Yeah. I haven't had any growth in terms of my business. Um, the wave that I rode is, has crashed and now I need to build a new wave. That's the, like a part of the big reason is like the shift in content too, like branding wise, the, I I've feel like the age of the influencer is over. Like the glamorous, well, what do like, you mean by that? Just like, Oh, I want to be him because he drives a Lamborghini. He lives in LA. He hangs out with hot girl. Like the Dan Bilzerian ness of mm -hmm. Instagram and social media is over. If you go on social media, people are looking for more real, more authentic, you know, they love podcasts, people having real conversations. They love, like, there's a lot of influencers who have popped off for golf. There's a lot of influencers who have popped off who have a job and they just film what they're doing at their job. Yeah. Like this cool life. I feel like people are kind of sensing, sniffing out all the bullshit. Yeah. And I want to, maybe they're just over it. Yeah. They're, they're over, and this, I'm like, over it. this like sensationalized lifestyle that people don't actually live. Exactly. And I'm over it too. I think COVID really tra transformed LA. It shifted my yeah. life in a horrible way because I was peak performance before COVID. And then I, like I dr started drinking a ton, shifted my life. And yeah, I think I came and did what I had to do. And now I'm going to shift my brand to more family oriented content. Uh, I want to get a dog. I want to just have more of like a wholesome lifestyle and really hone in on what's important to me rather than like getting distracted by the freaking Instagram models and all yeah. these like other distractions. Cause that, I mean, they don't exist at Ohio. <laughs> maybe a couple, maybe, maybe a couple, a couple. maybe I could find you can one. Still get distracted. Maybe, um, get a dog by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, it's but speaking on that. So my sister's opening up a med spa in Cleveland and then a juice bar. And okay. I was talking to her and my brother owns a landscaping company. And I haven't had a job job since I worked for my brother's landscaping company. I've never had a real job. Yeah. And I guess technically if I did help them out, I wouldn't be a real job because it's my fucking family. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I've never had to apply for a job. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, but I'm going to, I'm thinking about working at my sister's juice bar once a week, like every Sunday or something. And so if you're in Cleveland, I'll, I'll let you guys know when it opens. It's being built right now. Every Sunday I'm thinking I'm going to make juices and smoothies and avocado toast and just like... I actually think you're going to have fun with that. Yeah. Yeah. Just something different. Yeah. Something different. Different, different perspective. Meeting new do. people. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be cool. And I think, yeah, meeting new people, customer interactions, yeah. getting to talk to people, and then I'll probably film it and vlog it. Can you imagine finding you're like the next girl at the med spa and she just thinks you're some med spa clerk? That'd be awesome. That would be... That'd be I think that would be ideal. She didn't know who you were. And you're like, just like some med spa guy. Have you ever like, had a real job? Cool. I mean, you have a job. Oh, I have, but have you ever worked in like the service industry? Never customer service. I think I'd lose my fucking shit on people. Mm -hmm. I don't have like the temperament to like just sit there and wait on people all day. I mean, I worked for the Dodgers for years. Like I worked for the Pistons for years. What? Like, What'd you do for them? Uh, I worked in sponsorship sales for both of them. Oh. I moved to Detroit when I was 20. You lived in Detroit? Yeah, dude. Yeah. 
my first year out of college, I used to work for the Dodgers, like selling marketing sponsorship packages for years to like United Airlines and Bank of America in 76 and like activating and doing like player interaction, all this shit. I've always, I've always been in that, in that like space. And then I got a job offer to go to Detroit, uh, to run that department for the Pistons. I was like 24. Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, had, it was a very big, I usually tell people that it was an easy decision, even though it was like uprooting my life. But the real story is that it was a very difficult decision because I had just gotten married. And this is what I wanted to bring up. Yeah. So Iggy has lived many lives. And Too many, bro. I'm tired. I keep forgetting to bring this up in the podcast, but Iggy was once married. Pretty quickly divorced thereafter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, the short version, I, I met this girl. So I went to a really small private high school. I was kind of like the chubby, funny brown friend in high school. Mm-hmm. And I started taking football and baseball like really seriously, like my sophomore, junior year. Went through puberty a little later, like ended up leaning out and like looking more like the person I look like now. And at a really small private school, you're just kind of like the guy you are in sixth grade is just like that's your personality forever. Yeah. Like there was 73 people in my graduating mm. class. There's not a lot of like wiggle room to be in re like right. reimagine yourself. Um, so like I never really had like that, like really romantic interaction. I was like a virgin until freshman year of college. Same on purpose though. Probably. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're mine, so- mine was like, I just didn't really have the chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, my freshman year of college, I see this girl and I think she's gorgeous. I walk up to her with this like newfound confidence of like, okay, I know I look better than I used to. Nobody knows me here. It's my first impression. Like I can hit on people and like feel a little more confident. I remember like, (laughs) I remember walking up to her in the commons, which for those of you don't go to college, the commons is just like the cafeteria. Um, and taking the chair next to her and spinning it around. So I'm like leaning on the front, like a fucking douchebag. And I just start talking to her and she finds me interesting and funny or stupid or whatever. Mm-hmm. And enough to like have a conversation. We end up talking, going out on a date after, and this is a good example of like how quickly I move with the people that I like. Yeah. After the first date, we like hung out that entire evening. We hung out all night. We went to like a party and then like we ended up talking until like five, six in the morning. We didn't hook up, but like five, mm-hmm. six in the morning. And you were still a virgin at this point. No, oh, okay. no. Um, but we didn't hook up the very next morning. I'm like, I would love to, I would like, I would love to take you to coffee and get breakfast and keep talking. Like I had a really great night, but I have to go to my parents. Cause like at the time I was still going home like mm-hmm. every weekend to see my mom and dad. And I was like, do you just want to go with me oh, man. one day and one night with this chick? I take her back home. My parents had never met a girl before. Mm-hmm. Cause I just that never had a real enough relationship to bring anybody home. I thought you were gay. I don't think they thought I was gay, <laughs> but they were like, they were definitely like they're He's just taking his time or whatever. He's saving it for Jesus or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I bring her home and we were together for I my freshman going to sophomore year of college, six years probably. So my entire college career and like my entire college career was filled with this really uncomfortable feeling of missing out on the college experience Mm -hmm. because I would like wake up early and like go to practice and go to classes and like have that experience with like my boys and then want to have that fun experience as a single guy in college. Right. The girl I was, I I married was dating at the time was three years older. So she graduated when I was a sophomore. Mm. And she lived like 45 minutes away. So I would drive to her place like every single night. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember just getting so resentful Mm. because I'm like, I just want to like, I'm 19. Yeah. Like I'm playing football. I want to just party and like do stupid shit at frat. You know, I just want to like have a college time. And so I had a really hard time mixing those two lives together. Um, And I think that's where like that discomfort between we'd like, (laughs) Not a, it's a story that you know very well. We'd broken up and gotten back together mm-hmm. many, many times. Um, but that was the only girl that I really ever dated. Ever dated. Ever dated. Mm-hmm. And when I graduated and got the job with the Dodgers, she was like, all right, dude. I basically waited for you to graduate and get a job. 
we're getting married or I'm out. And I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, this is the only girl that I've ever like been in love with. Maybe it's the only girl that's ever going to love me. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess this is just what the next step is. Yeah. The cookie cutter life. Yeah. Yeah. And she like, she wanted kids soon. Like she wanted like picket fence soon. And I'm like, I never got to have that rager life with my friends in college when I wanted to. And now I'm even more like stuck. And mm -hmm. that feeling of wanting to do my own thing was growing so big inside me. Yeah. So when I got that chance to go to Detroit, I was like, done, I'm out. Because she couldn't move. She had a job here. Yeah. And so I was there for six months. You were married months. yet? Did you get married yet? Yes. Wow. So I was there for six months on my own. Did you do like a whole proposal and wedding? Oh, yeah. We got, we got, our wedding ceremony was at Dodger Stadium. What? On home plate. Like, it was kind of cool. Yeah. Kind of, it, it, like in hindsight, a little corny, but like yeah. for me at the time, I was like this, like I was, we were literally on home plate having the ceremony. That's crazy. It's kind of tight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was working there at the time, so like whatever, but um, went into mountains of debt to like make it work mm -hmm. and have it feel cool and special, which was whatever. Um, but when I got a chance to leave and like basically start a new life or like feel like I was doing something just for me, mm -hmm. from the moment I got to college, I was doing something for someone else. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I get to do this thing that like advances my career. I get to be selfish and just do this for me. So I fucking left. I was there for six months. Did you guys live together? I was there for six months and about three months in, I remember, <laughs> I remember sitting in a Best Buy parking lot because one of my controllers had broken and I needed to get a new controller for my Xbox at the time. And I was just sitting there and she called me and I declined it. Hmm. Didn't really have a reason to decline it. I just didn't want to talk to her. And then I kept sitting there for a little longer. And then I just started crying. And I'm like, where the fuck am I? What the fuck am I doing here? Is this really what I want to be doing with my life right now? Like legitimately existential crisis, like 24 years old. She called again and I picked it up. And she's like, are you okay? What's going on? And I'm like, I'm okay. Like, it's that like, I'm okay. I just, you know what I mean? That like mm -hmm. anxiety cry. And I had to tell her over the phone that I didn't know if I wanted to do this anymore. Part of it was that in like the three months that I was alone, I felt like I was having a better experience, like a better life experience mm. on my own without you having to have someone there. You were having more fun without her than you were with her. I was enjoying my life more without her than with her. Mm. Part of that could have been that I was like, I was out and like flirting a little and like that felt nice to like just be out and have drinks and be with like new friends and like build new experiences and I had that, for whatever reason, in the Best Buy parking lot, I had the realization that I didn't want to have those with her. I just wanted to do those for me. And it fucked me up. Mm -hmm. And so she took time off work and came to Detroit. And we like were together for, I don't know, like a month or something. And I am i don't remember it perfectly, but I'm sure I was a dick about it. I was mm -hmm. so upset. I was like, I don't want to fucking do this anymore. And a big part of it was like, all right, you have a much better job in Detroit. We're going to save up money and I want to have kids like pretty much right away. And so this like combination of, I want to do stuff for myself versus like, if I go her way, it's the ultimate, it's ultimately the, the exact opposite position mm -hmm. where our life is now built around creating a life for this other human being. Mm -hmm. And I just, I couldn't do it. And I remember I remember, yeah, this is such a dick move, but I remember like even when I was, even when she was at the house, I wanted to do my thing so badly that I left the house one night and I'm like, I'm just going to go. Like, I can't talk to you about this anymore. Like, I can't do this anymore. I'm just going to go. And I went out and like party till three in the morning and I came back, like hammered stuff on the couch. Like that shouldn't happen at 24. Mm -hmm. It's fucked up. And that's a fucked up thing to do in a, a situation to be in for anybody. It got so bad between us that my mom flew out to Detroit to like mediate because she loved my mom and my mom 
is one of the best ladies and she's my mom's fucking incredible Mm -hmm. and she was like i love you i know that you're young i know that you both are young what you're doing is fucked up what she's doing is fucked up i'm gonna come to detroit i'm gonna try to talk to you guys and it was more of the same just this like complete inability to see eye to eye about anything and because you'd already checked out i was beyond checked yeah out. not only i wasn't was she fighting out. for it though i think that she was she was fighting for the relationship mm-hmm. i think she i think at that point she was like no longer happy with me because mm-hmm. i i had checked out long enough for like i wasn't acting like a good partner anymore mm-hmm. like i just i didn't really care um she was fighting for the relationship. I don't think anybody wants to get divorced. Like it's such a heavy concept yeah. that also has like legal ramifications. Yeah. Um, we try, I not, not even tried, but like it, it, we stayed together for like six months longer than we should have. And that was literally only like a year and a half after we had gotten married. But I knew in my fucking gut, dude, I knew in my gut, I was like, this is not the direction I want to go in, but I'm scared to not have this person. And, as much as I've gotten over that feeling, definitely still creeps up. Mm. Um, and that is officially the first time I have ever told that story out loud to someone not like an intimate relationship or my family. It was really hard, really hard to like tell someone that you're going to dedicate your life to them and, and knowing that you love them mm-hmm. totally. And then have a set of life experiences that make you go, this is not at all what I want. And how hard it is to like rectify those two things, you know, like how do I get, how do I get to a point where I'm happy for me while also making this relationship happy for us when those two things are completely at odds. As you look back, you're 37 now, this was what, 12 years ago. 13 years ago. Yeah, just about. Do you regret? Was the party stage worth it? The leaving and doing what you wanted to do? Or do you look back and wish you hadn't done that? I I don't think it was a party stage. I I think Mm -hmm. it was doing what felt authentically right for me in that moment. Mm -hmm. Marrying her was not right for me. It wasn't what I wanted to do. It, It wasn't... If in a perfect world, I could have had some of those experiences with her Mm -hmm. and built a relationship where we both could have that kind of fun experience together. But I felt like I was forced to make a choice between having any part of that life and committing to this person. We, we like moved into a place right away. Like we got a dog, right? Like we had a little family right away. And it was about like going to work and like, going to your nine to five and hustling Mm -hmm. and saving money for like the family. I didn't want to do that shit. And it wasn't about just partying. It was more, it was also about living a life, building a life that I wanted to build. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't say I regret it. Like it, uh, I guess I don't regret either part. Um, the failure of that relationship was a really good indication of me needing to make sure that I take care of myself before I can take care of anybody else. That's a pretty common notion in like relationship psychology, yeah, yeah. right? Like you have to be able to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And I definitely was not. Um, and so I can't be regretful for the relationship, even though it did hurt. All. That's the thing too, bro. You hurt so many fucking people. Yeah. My mom, her, my dad, my grandmother, God bless her fucking soul. Like her parents, like you just hurt. There's so many people that are invested in it. Um, I'm remorseful for hurting the people in my life. My mom was fuck, a fucking wreck for mm-hmm. months. She took it really personally. Sorry, mom. Um, and then the like figuring out my shit stage. No, dude, I'm still figuring it out. Mm-hmm. We're still figuring it out. But now I'm able to like, clearly define and have more intention around the things that I do for me and how they make me feel, whether they're good or bad. Like if I, if I like myself after this activity and how that lines up with a person that I'd like to be with. 
we don't have to love the same things, but there, it, there has to be a level of like, in whatever relationship I have next, an acceptance of the things that I enjoy doing that don't hurt anybody else. Like if I want to play Madden until three in the morning, it's not hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. That should be okay. Right. Within reason. Yeah. If I want to go out with my guys and sure, there are going to be girls around, of course. But at this stage in my life, I know that I can just look at my guy friends and just have a fucking, uh, everybody needs that guy time. Mm -hmm. I think more than anything, that's what I felt was like taken away. Was that just like dude time in college? We were sitting around at the time, like playing Halo until five in the morning. Right. Like I had to like sneak away to just do that thing, like that, have that. Well, you're still time. young. You weren't mature. Like you, like. But I even you had missed that, out on your twenties, pretty much. I feel like I missed out on like on my early twenties, that that college time. I did. But even in like my last relationship, like I get so emotionally wrapped up in the other person mm -hmm. that I sometimes neglect my friends, right? Like I wouldn't come out anymore or like I would say I was coming out then not make it, right? Because right. I don't yeah. want to like, I don't want it to affect the other person or have the other person be upset. Like, and now I'm in a position, you talk about your prime, like in my emotional prime right now, I can be like, look, these are my needs. I want to hang out with my friends. Yes. We're going to play beer die and wrestle on the beach and I'm going to get hammered. Yeah. But I'm not going to be stupid and I'm not thinking about anybody else. And I love you for letting me do this. In fact, I want you to come. But if you don't want to come, I still want to go do this. Mm -hmm. And that's okay that we have like different things that we can do at different. We don't have to always be together. It's very important to have guy time in any relationship. Like my brother goes golfing all the time. He has a hobby. He goes and hangs with his buddies. Like you can't just... And, and it, I'm similar to you. I get engulfed in the relationship and I want to do everything with that person and I lose my identity. Totally. Uh, what made you get married? Like, why did you, it take you so long to come to the realization that you didn't want that? Like, why did you go down the road? I was terrified. I was terrified of giving up on it. I, like, I feel like I'd gone so deep. Did I, you get an ultimatum? Was it, hey, we're you, getting married or we're done? Basically, yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're forced into the marriage, essentially. I mean, I wasn't forced into anything. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like, by the time that I had graduated, you know what it's like at graduation? All your friends are gone. Now you're like working or like mm -hmm. now you're... When you're in college, it is this gigantic social experiment where there are like people around you all the time, including women. Mm -hmm. I was around athletes and female athletes like I was around opportunity all the time then you graduate and you're done it's like okay either go home or go figure your life out and so when I graduated I didn't have like an opportunity to engage with other people all the time so all of a sudden this person was the only person that I had in my life on an everyday basis mm -hmm. and I'm like well I just spent four years dealing with this shit and now my college time has ended if I leave this person, I'm alone. Mm. So I was terrified. Like, where would I find that other person? Like, what would, what, would I ever find another opportunity to have someone love me like this? And when I got the ultimatum, I was like, I don't want to lose someone that loves me. I'm scared to, because I don't know what the world has for me right now. And ended up going through that, you know, that process. When you're sitting in the Best Buy parking lot, <clears throat> breaking down, crying, and she calls you and you tell her you don't want to do this anymore, what did she, how was her reaction? Did she feel it coming? Was it, where is it yeah, coming from? Yeah, no, it, she, she, she was a smart girl. Um, mm -hmm. I'd been really distant for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I honestly don't remember the conversation, but I do remember how like horrible I felt. I remember that like, it was just like a bowling ball, like in my stomach. Like it was listening to her cry and ask questions that I didn't have answers for was fucking horrible. Cause you don't want to, I don't want to hurt this person. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hurt too. Like, I don't, I don't know what's, I don't really know what's going on with me either. Mm hmm. Um, it was a lot of crying. It was a lot of 
a lot of questions again that I just didn't really have the answer for. And ultimately it was like, all right, I'm going to come out there and we're going to try to figure this out. Was there anything wrong in the relationship? Like it's a relationship, dude. Yeah. Like, you know, like there's shit, there's no, there, no relationship is perfect. I think it was more so that like, if I would have stayed in LA, I would have had kids by now. Like if I didn't get that job opportunity and and, and had taken it, I don't think I would have left. Mm. Cause I would have never had an independent experience. Yeah. I grew up in LA and from Pasadena I went to school out here. I saw my parents all the time. Like say what you want, but like my mom would come over and like hang out with me and my room, my dad, would, like hang out with me and my football buddy and like do our laundry. Yeah. Like she's just a, good, amazing Latin mom. Like she wanted to see us and I loved having her over. I loved having my dad over. And then this girl was like mom number two, four years older. She was already making money. She was paying the bills first. And so there was, there was almost this like, I just never felt like I had a chance to be my own man for any period of time. It's important. I mean, when I moved out here, when I went to college, that's why I I encourage people to go to college, not commute because you get the independent experience. That's the only thing I gained from college is like, how do I live by myself? And what is that like? I got to do my own laundry. I got to do cook my own food. I got to go to my classes, get a schedule. Like you, you get that structure. And then when I moved here, but now I'm like, all right, yeah, I want to go back home. What is the divorce process? Like we weren't married for very long and neither of us had very many assets. Yeah. So like it was actually relatively straightforward. We just had to go to the court and get it. It was called an annulment. Yeah, yeah. Which basically means like, you never got married, right? In the Catholic church or something like that? Uh, an annulment means that from like a legal standpoint, you can separate cleanly. Mm. The divorce, I mean, like the, the, the marriage is revoked. It never happened. And nobody owes anybody anything. Like if we had bought a house together or like, yeah, I was 24 and it was my, at the time that in Detroit, I was making $70,000 a year. Which is balling in Detroit. And I'm <laughs> in LA, I, in LA, my very first job working for the Dodgers, I was making $35,000 a year. In LA? I was a marketing partnerships coordinator for the Dodgers. 35, and not granted inflation, whatever. Yeah, but you can't survive on that. I was living at home. Yeah. And, well, actually, no, I was living with her. Mm. So, like, she was taking care of us financially. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would... I'd always been kind of dependent on like my parents, like even though I played football, I didn't work really. So like my parents would help me out with money when I needed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I never had the, like, I'm the man of my own house ever. When I went to Detroit for the very first time in my life, bought my own furniture, set up my house the way I wanted it to be set up. Everything was my responsibility and it felt nice to figure out how I liked things. This makes a lot of sense now, given like, about why it's about the why separation. You, well, no, this gives a lot, makes a lot of sense as to why you were wearing designer clothes and all this stuff. It makes a lot of sense because a little more context. Yeah. Yeah. You give me a lot more context because your whole life you were dependent on other people and then you finally come into money yourself and you're like, I want to get the things that I want to get. I, like we had a budget, me and her, or, like, yeah, she, like, yeah. you know, we had a joint, we had joint shit. Like she managed again, she was four years older. Like I was like, I guess, I guess she figured it out. Like, like I, I didn't have a penny that was like, not to say that it, I didn't have like, I couldn't make decisions, but everything was together. And I'm like, I just want to do my own thing. That's marriage. Yeah. Well, (laughs) yeah, you're right. And I figured that out pretty quickly. Um, where is she married? Remarried kids? She got married. She got remarried quick. Really? Multiple babies. So she just, what she wanted. Yeah. Yeah. She just wanted to get married. Nothing wrong with her. That's what she wanted. Uh Good for her. It just wasn't what I wanted. I didn't know we were going to have this conversation on this thing. That got deep. I never knew about this. Yeah, man. uh, Uh, Well, I'm telling you, man, a handful of people know about this. Now everybody knows. So, yeah. Well, now the however many thousands of people. Yeah, it's fucking hard, man. It's a really difficult process. Would you say it was your fault? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because she stated clearly what she wanted. Yeah, yeah. She she gave the ultimatum. She said, "This is what I want," and I said, "Okay, we'll do it." Yeah. When knowingly, not what I wanted. What so. advice do you have for people in a similar situation? You, you know. 
You know. Your gut, you fucking know, dude. If you have question marks, like I guess I knew it wasn't. How do I put this? Like, I knew that it wasn't something that I was like running away from because I was afraid of commitment or like Mm -hmm. wanted to be a dumbass with my friend. Like, it wasn't this like trivial thing that was spooking me that I'm sure naturally spooks people when they get married or a relationship becomes difficult that makes you want to leave. It wasn't these small details that maybe you make larger in a fight or whatever. I knew deep down this was not a good idea. I knew this is not what I wanted and not for any trivial reason, but because I wanted to figure out who I was as a human. But I did it anyway because I was so afraid of what doing things alone would look like. Mm -hmm. You know the difference. When you're in a relationship and you're getting to that point, you can sit down with yourself and feel and know the difference, whether or not this is something I'm being stupid about and this is really what I want to do or this is not what I want to do. And the things I'm feeling are bigger than these small, trivial disagreements that I have with this person. You know what's interesting? I have two friends. They were dating for like seven, maybe 11 years. A long time, like enough that you should already be married. And I think she came to him and was like, hey, same thing, ultimatum. We've been dating for fucking seven years, 11 years. Uh, Are we going to get married or not? Because if not, I'm going to move on. And he didn't get married to her. They both got into new relationships and married those new people. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me why you would date someone for so long and then go date someone for a year and then get married is it was like <laughs> they become your whole life dude yeah is it, you talk to them every day you just get scared fucking, to live without them of course man it, it's being alone is scary for most people mm-hmm. like dying alone has to be on the top you know top 10 list of like things that people are afraid of if when you embed your life into someone else's life for that long separating is so fucking difficult and yeah. so fucking painful not to say that it's the right move or the wrong move, but like do the process of do of untangling from each other over time is so fucking impossible. What would you say has hurt more the divorce or your previous relationship? Previous relationship. Why? Cause I wanted that to work. Mm. Did you That's what it, I wanted. Did you get karma? Man, <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe I, yeah. I believe in karma, I guess. Um, yeah, the last one hurt so much fucking more. Because I wanted her to come to things with me. Mm. Like I wanted to do all the, thi- all the things I've never done. I've, I want, wanted to do them with this person. Yeah. It's where I, I was, re- I'm ready. Right. I wanted it. I wanted this partnership. Not to settle down and get married. But to like experience these new things with this person. I think I hurt, I hurt other people more in the previous one. Yeah. It, I've had two relationships reflecting on them. This past one hurt more similarly because I wanted it to work. And I think my first relationship, as you talk about, I was young. It was new. It was exciting in the moment. Did it hurt more? Yeah, because I'd never been through a breakup before. I never had my heart broken. I didn't know what that felt like. So I was, I cried a lot more. I didn't cry as much uh, during this breakup. But like, this one hurts more because I wanted it to work. It sucks, man. And I think in the first one, like you, I was so focused on work and living my life and doing what I should be doing as a 20 something year old, getting my ducks in a row, you know? And then this one, I was like, Oh, I can really see myself like settling down, getting married, having kids. And that hurts for sure. I don't think it's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's karma for either of us. I think it's just fucking life, dude. Just, yeah. I mean, I think I, I'm sure, I'm sure there are billions and billions of people who've had this exact same experience. 
wanted something so badly didn't work out. But I agree with the gut feeling thing. I mean, that's important to follow your gut. That's the only wonder, advice I can give. I'm sure there's tons of people out there stuck in marriages that they wish they never got into. Yeah, but that entanglement, right? Like now, now you have yeah. kids, they have a house. Like now it gets like the only saving grace for me was that we had nothing. Right. You know, like we were renting an apartment. You can it's break also a lease. interesting. It's like you mar- you dated for six years and then you're married for a year and you already get a divorce. It's like, how could you, like, what changes when people get married versus dating? Well, I mean, like I told you, I might have still been in it if I never left LA. Right. I was thrust into a completely new environment just by myself. Most people don't have that, lu- mm-hmm. like, not luxury, but most people don't have that experience. I lived in the same, like, 60 mile radius my entire life, basically. Yeah. You never left the bubble. Never. Yeah. If I was, if I had never, again, if I had never gone to Detroit and like made a life in the Midwest, in Chicago for years and years and years, I know I would have stayed with that person, Mm -hmm. had the 401k, hated my job. Well, this is why I tell people you got to leave the bubble and experience a different life because you don't know what's out there. And no, you, you, you don't know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 haven't, you don't even know who you are yet. This is what I, why I tell my family. Like, my family's never left America. Like, it's insane to me. And it's like, through all those experiences of traveling to Europe, to South America, to Africa, to South, uh, I already said South America, to like Mexico, whatever, Canada, you learn so much about who you are as a person. And it's so important. And living in LA, it's so important to leave the bubble. Because yeah. you really, when you stay in your bubble, that is who you are for the rest of your life. And you don't realize the potential I feel like that you have until you leave and start thinking for yourself and yeah. having to do all these responsibilities by yourself. You're like, wait, I like this. But exactly. back home, I, exactly. I didn't like that yeah. because, yeah, that's wild. That's what happened. I really don't. I, you want to talk about trans swimming now? <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, now you know my one of my uh, most closely held secrets, I guess. I feel like some of our friends don't even know that. So no one does. Thanks for opening up about that. Yeah. I'm sure it's... Literally nobody in our friend group knows that. So, yeah, I mean, I probably would have never met you then. This would be... Never, dude. Never, bro. Not a chance. Like... It, do we talk about like on another on another episode like we we're talking about how easy it is for for us to take shit for granted like the mm-hmm. cool shit we get to do? I would have looked; it would have been ten thousand miles away from me. I'd have had a little house. I'd have been in debt. I'd have been fat, mad. Like I'd have had a kid. It. it I I know that's the life I was gonna have. When you start dating girls, do you tell them that you were divorced until it gets like serious? Probably. This yeah. The, when it gets serious, sure. Like yeah. I don't have anything to hide. Um, I don't lead with it. <laughs> it's it's not like it's hey, not I'm going fucking, through a divorce. Like, How yeah, long's it been? Twelve years. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not like a name tag I wear. How um, long afterwards did you guys stay in contact? Just curious, because you didn't have anything tying you to each other. I, I swear I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. Because like once it was formally done, I was like, so this is this is the difference too. My most recent ex, I didn't even want to, and I told you this and I meant it very sincerely. I wasn't even like, I felt like I was asexual. I wasn't even looking at girls. I didn't care. Mm-hmm. I was sad. Like dating, meeting UP just wasn't on my radar. I was just trying to recover from being sad. Yeah. When I got divorced, my club, <laughs> like I'm out, like I'm outside, dude. I'm you in felt, Chicago. Yeah, you were in like I prison. was like, dude, I just like. This is off my back. I just want to go live. My, I just want to go do everything I want to go do. Mm-hmm. That was that's a big difference. Well, well. Uh, so there's trans in Olympics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go to our topic of conversation. Holy shit! Here. That was, whew, man. That was a lot. Oh, good lord! And now I got a little doggy, and we're having a good time. Yeah, she's got a family. You got a dog. I'm good. Um, I went. Well, let's talk about the weekend. So sure. I, I went. Friday, I played in a golf tournament, scramble, at a really nice place in Pechanga, Temecula, okay. Okay. next to the Pechanga Casino. Played well? We won. Wow. Shots. Money? No, we won. We went 16 under. 
We won $400 G4 golf bags, each of us. Pretty cool. Pretty sick prize. I needed a new golf bag. Uh, I'm excited when I go back to Ohio. A lot of people have been asking if I'm going to start the caddy kid back up again. Yes, I'm going to be golfing a lot in Ohio. And then Saturday, we did our whatever, our whole day there. And then Monday, I went to this new movie, The Bike Riders premiere. I, I, well, I was meaning to ask you, how did you even get an invite to that? Spotify. They hit you up and they're yeah, like, Yeah, my buddy works cool. for Spotify. He always oh, invites cool. me to like events and stuff. So there's a red carpet. Austin Butler was there. How handsome is that guy? Good looking guy. Crazy? Bugger oh remote. Oh my God. He's still got that Elvis voice what going a stud on. That guy is. But I said I was going to give a review on my uh, Instagram. But to be honest, guys, I did not like the movie. So I didn't no. want to leave a negative review. The cinematography was great. Uh, some funny moments, good acting, but to me, there was no good character development. You didn't draw like an emotional appeal to the characters where there were times that there should have been like, oh, I should be like choking up right now, but I didn't feel any emotions. Yeah. They just didn't like build a close relationship from the viewer to the character. And then it was just kind of a movie about bike riders. Like there was no like, it was like a girl narrating like what had happened in the past. And like, I'm not saying the movie sucked. It's a yeah. good watch, but it's like, it's not going to win awards. You know what I mean? I thought I was going to ask, is it, is it going to theater as good or like wait till you order wait it till it's out? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Um, but Austin Butler though, but Austin Butler, good looking guy. Sexy as hell. Uh, in other news, I had a studio session this past week too. I love that you're making music, man. Music's coming back out. I have two songs done, getting done. I got one song getting mixed and mastered, which means it's the final steps, and then I'm going to freaking drop it. It's about my ex-girlfriend. Nice, dude. And you guys all know that I speak the truth in my music. Oh, shit. So pay attention to the lyrics closely so you'll find out a little more information about the truth. And then the other song's a dance EDM song. Both are going to rock. Both are. I'm excited for both. Smashes. You guys know I only put out smashes. Well, when are they coming out, you think? When he said he's supposed to get the mix to me today, so hopefully he gets it done. But with the producers, it always there's always some leeway. So hopefully he gets it done, and then I could probably drop it. Could be I a think, summer smash, dude. Uh, the breakup one's not. It's pop punk. No, the other one. The EDM. Yeah, one. the other one. But I saw. Um, not to cut you off, talking about music. I saw um, Fred again. Oh yeah, you went to that very first time last this past Friday. People love him. It's demon music. <laughs> it's fucking. It's psychotic. I. If I was under the influence, I was sober, by the way. It was just like a last minute, like I was on a date. We're like, let's just, let's just go. Mm. If I was under the influence, I can see how it would be really engaging. Right. Sober, I felt like I was like a, like a 70s dad being like, yeah. don't listen to that fucking, that's devil music. That, 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 that rock music's the devil music. It was just sounds and weird images yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was fucking nuts mm -hmm. my song is not like that it's more I, like i'm John's not saying family. it's bad yeah. i just i'm like this is this is what demons listen to when yeah. they want to hang out but in terms of timeline i'm thinking because basically on my youtube channel the start of my new era is going to be first video leaving obviously moving out then it's going to be driving across america and then new life. And I think that'll be like a good starting point to get some traffic. And then I'll drop the song. Dope. Are you going to have like all on the same channel? Yeah, I always do. Yeah, yeah, that's tight. But we got to figure out how to do the podcast moving forward. Well, we got to do one in my house next week. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know how frequently you're going to come out of here. I don't want to do it on Zoom. I'd rather. No way. But maybe, maybe I just give you a camera and we talk on like a nice camera so we don't film on the well, maybe you want to do, should we do a sleepover live stream? Should we do a Kai Sanat? Yeah. We can. We, we can do it next week. We can do a stream next week. That'd be hilarious. We can cuddle, man. But I think that's going to do it for today's episode. Shout out to Iggy for opening up about a very vulnerable moment in his life. Hopefully you're better now. I don't know. It depends what you're asking, I guess. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Say goodbye to my apartment, man. You will be missed. I moved in here with a girl, and I'm moving out alone. I will say, I'm going to miss you, buddy. you become my very best friend in L.A. I'm going to be very sad when you're gone. I know we're going to talk all the time, but I'm going to miss yeah. you a lot, man. Love miss you. you too, man. Good, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you guys. I